like to welcome each of you tonight. Uh, we're glad that you've come out on this Thursday night to, to enjoy a Mad Camp performance. Uh, we've got folks from all different places. How many of y'all have been to one of their performances before? Raise your hand if you've been. Oh, wow, look at the hands. All right. Uh, how many of you have had family that have been in Mad Camp? Raise your hands. Okay. Yep. I was talking to Tony Kranz just a little earlier about how many years ago it's been since our daughter was in it, which we think is about 18 years ago or so. Uh, enjoyed it, her being it. She's a little bumblebee uh, in, in, in the uh, play. So uh, we're just really excited to have uh, them come. I was so tickled that Patrick called us and, and said, hey, we got an opening. Uh, we'd like to come and share with you. So we're glad you've come. I think you're in for a real blessing uh, tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Patrick and let him tell you about the program tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Patrick. Howdy. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Patrick. Hey. All right. Hey. You're supposed to tell me your names, too. That's why I can know it. Um, sorry. Dude. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that for next time. Uh, we're super excited to be here. Uh, we've got 21 campers and eight staff that have been working really hard uh, this week. Uh, I want to get you an idea in case you've never heard what they do at Music and Drama Camp. Uh, That's what MAD stands for. We're not angry, and it's not for kids that are angry. It's for kids that do music and drama. Uh, but we get there on Sunday night, and we split up into teams, and we have supper, and we play a couple games. And then while they start playing those games, uh, myself and Kaylee, our, our music director, and uh, Philip, our sound guy, sit down in a room. Four kids at a time come in, and they audition. They, they read through some scripts. They read through some parts. They tell us what they hope to do and want to do, all their wishes and dreams for the week. Uh, they sing a little bit for Kaylee, and then after they're all done, Kaylee and Philip and I sit up until about 12 o'clock, maybe 12.30, and put them all in place, figure out where they're going to go, who's, where they're going to be best, where is their talent going to shine the brightest, and then on Monday morning, they get up, they eat breakfast, and then they get their part. So these guys have known what they were going to do at this point for three days. How many of you could remember a full one-hour musical with choreography and lines and blocking and places in three days? There's not as many hands as I thought there might be. Like, none of you guys, none of y'all. Uh, it's all right, though, because these kids have been working as hard as they can to be able to come and share a message with you because they think it's important. It's been fantastic and I don't want to hold it back from it anymore. So we present with my own eyes. students, the triplets. No, 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 they're fraternal. They look nothing alike. It was crazy. They tried to turn my third period into Sunday school. Can you believe they told me to believe in Jesus? Like that's ever gonna happen. What did I say? Well, I basically told them they'd have to be fools to believe in such nonsense. Yeah, I'm just cleaning up. I'll be home in a little bit. Okay, I just really hope I can get this in the bud. I know they're only children. And I know they mean no harm. But the lies that they are sharing are real. students, but I cannot let this go. It's sad to see they've been deceived, so I've got to let them know.
What are you three going on about? Well, you see, Professor, it's our teacher, Miss Crabapple. She's our favorite teacher. Or was. What about Miss Crabapple? Well, she said, she said, I can't even repeat it. Calm down, sis. I'll take it from here. You see, Professor, we were in science class. That's what Mrs. Crabapple teaches. We were in science class with Mrs. Crabapple when she was explaining how things were made, like creation and stuff, and while she was teaching. She said that only a weak-minded simpleton could possibly believe that this was real. Oh, I see. Did you say why she believed that? She said we should only believe what we can prove through scientific observation. She said seeing is believing. It's too bad she'll never know the truth. If there were only a way she could see what we could
for I visit a time machine. Let me guess, it only goes forward in time? And at normal speed? Yeah, Professor, is this like the time you invented the laser-guided butter knife? Or the automatic dog washer? Barkley was never the same. No, children, <laughs> this time I've really done it. I invented a machine that travels through time and space. And I believe it's high time you tested it. Um, Professor, that is a cell phone. Yeah, my old cell phone. Well, yes, in a way. But it's a little more complicated than that. Jesus for ourselves. Let's give your teacher the proof she doesn't even know she's asking for. Um, Professor, will you be able to get us back in time for supper? It's a time machine, my dear. I can get you back five minutes ago. That's fantastic! <laughs> but first, <laughs> this is an essential oil blend I like to call cognitive dissonance. In most basic terms, it will cause us to blend in and understand what's around us. Like a filter for our perceptions? That's brilliant! I thought so too. And more than that, anyone who's close enough, say, in the same room, will also be affected. Yes, in a way that makes sense to them. Now let's fire up the time machine. Go back in time. Beep boop ba beep. Ka ching! <laughs> Whoa, what a trip! 
The sensation is quite spectacular. Are we really back in time? Oh yes, according to my readings, we're in the area of Decapolis. We are 31 Inc. Then why are all the people wearing modern clothes? <laughs> well, that's the power of cognitive dissonance. It allows our brain to see what we need to understand. But, Professor, that means our pictures won't be proof at all. Take a picture and tell me what you see. Well, very simply, the oils have no effects on the mechanism of the camera. So even though we can see and understand everything, the camera cannot tell a lie. Now, let's see if we can find Jesus. Professor, that man over there is teaching to a crowd. Is that him? Is that Jesus? Oh, that is not at all what I expected him to look like. I thought he'd be more, I don't know, kingly? I don't know if it's him or not. Let's go over there and listen and see if we can find out. And so there I was, a passenger in my own body, not knowing if I was ever going to be myself again. Oh, you must have been so frightened. It was frightening. It's something I hope I never experience again. Demon possession? That's wild. I mean, you always hear about these sort of things, but you never expect to meet someone who has, well, you know. Dale, this is nothing to joke about. <coughs> Seriously, how insensitive can you be? Well, if you had seen him covered in that goo moaning and running, you would have thought he was being possessed too. You are so childish. Both of you, hush! I want to hear I escaped. Tell us, Gary, how did you escape? But that's just it. I didn't escape. I was rescued. Ooh. Yes, rescued by the most amazing man that has ever walked this earth. If he's so amazing, why aren't you with him right now? I wish that I was. I, I tried to go with him. I followed him all the way back to his boat. But, but he told me he had a different task for me. What was it? Is it a secret? It's not a secret. Then what was it then? Yeah, what did he tell you? He told me to go and tell everyone of the torment that I endured and how, and how he saved me from it. That's why I'm here today, because my entire life was changing that one meeting with Jesus from Nazareth. Wait, so Jesus is real? I mean, we've all heard about these miracles from this miracle man of Nazareth. But they always seem so fantastic. I've always told myself that I would need to be able to see Jesus with my own eyes in order to be able to believe the stories. I promise you, Frank, Jesus of Nazareth is very real and very powerful. I was not just possessed, I was filled with like a legion of demons. I heard you were running around with no clothes on. Sleeping in a cave. That you broke chain after chain that they tried to use and bind you. Constantly howling and moaning. Hanging out in the graveyard. Yes, and more than that. My cuts, the demons caused me to hurt myself. Cutting and scraping my body with sharp rocks. And has Jesus saved you from that? He did, like, like a ray of light in the darkness of my life, with just one word of command, sent the demons out of me. And into a herd of pigs, the stories are too big to believe. Uh, would you please show some respect? It's, it's okay, because my, my cuts and bruises are healed. And it was only three weeks ago since that day, but I now know that because of meeting Jesus, my life will never be the same. Wow, that's crazy. Some people Yeah.
Some people say that I'm crazy. There was a time it was true. Cause I met this man, it called Jesus. He saved me and gave me the that Jesus is real. It seems we missed him by several weeks. Let me, the calibration matrix must be out of alignment. Let me tweak this. But Professor, the time machine actually works. Yeah, this is your greatest invention by far. Yes, I think so too. And I think I just found, I fixed it. Now let's try it again. <laughs> beep, boop, boop, beep, ka <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. Think what I was showing. 
It was crazy awesome. Best day of my life. Jesus was sitting right over there talking about cuties or something. <laughs> he wasn't talking about cuties. He was talking about marriage. Same thing. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter what he was talking about to us. We want to get close. Yeah, we were trying to get close and see Jesus, but his friends kept pushing us back. They said the master is too important and busy for some snot-nosed little kids to bother him. Can you believe that? I can. <laughs> <laughs> but then Jesus heard them and was like, hold up, more people should be like these kids. Oh, really? Yeah, and he said we were princes. And princesses. And that we could have a whole kingdom. And if anyone could be just like us, that they could be a prince and a princess too. He was holding me when he said that, Bart. I felt so special. I've never felt as special as I did then. I don't think I will ever. <coughs> doesn't really put it into words. All I know is that I will always remember the time Jesus held me close. TJ, yeah, I. Um, I think, I don't think I'll ever be the same because of it. Thank you for sharing. 
That is very beautiful. How long ago was Jesus here? He was here nearly a week ago. I wanted to go with him when he left, but my mom said I was too little. But even though I couldn't go, I will always be following Jesus right here. Yeah, yeah me too. too. Hmm. I do think I finally got this blasted thing Calvary. This is British. He just left. Much like these young ones a week ago. I sure hope so, Professor. Come on, let's try it again. Beep, boop, boop, beep, ka -ching. this much easier. Look here, you came and got our taxes last week. And if you take from us again, we won't be able to feed our families. I know! You know, you know, you know that taking and taking and taking from us will starve us and our families? Yet you're still here. Yes, stop before you end up in jail. Or worse. If I may, I have something important to tell you. Here we go again. Hmm, I wonder what that important thing could be. And I bet you'd be guessing it once. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that this important message that we are paying more taxes. No, it's nothing like that. And what is it like? Actually, it's news I'm sure you've all been waiting to hear, even if you thought you never would. You got us all pet monkeys? Mm. <laughs> No, but it is something I hope you'll think is just as wonderful. I'm here to beg your forgiveness for the wrongs I've done against you. I'm so sorry. Is that so? Zacchaeus? Yes, do I know you? But No, but we've heard of you. <coughs> yeah, and it seems that you really are a wee little man. <laughs> Children! No, it's okay. I deserved that for how I treated the people of Jericho. Now I must do all that I can to make amends. Zacchaeus, are you feeling well? I feel like there's someone hiding and laughing at us. Yeah, something definitely smells fishy about this. I think that's just your shirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing is wrong. I feel fine. In fact, I feel better than I ever have. Well, I'm glad you're in a good mood because I can't take it anymore. And I think it's high time someone told you exactly what everyone thinks of you. You're a small man, Zacchaeus, and you swing the last each time you see us. There's just one thing that will please us. So, so Zacchaeus, please leave us, Zacchaeus, you wee little man. For a 
traitor, you're a coward With the Texas sky rocketing skyward Now your name is just a byword So Zacchaeus, please leave us Zacchaeus, you wee little man I have come here to say that I'm sorry For the burden I caused you to bear And I hope that you find in your heart to forgive And I promise I'll always be fair It's a trick! trick. Don't believe it! Liar! You flew off the box And we're forced to pay more than we're able You both flew out and I think The back is we lay the back is I have come to make the restitution It's the right thing to do and it's fair I'm returning each one of you four times as much Just to show that I can missionary tag team yesterday, so we have a lot of catching up to do. So today, we will be continuing our look at the origin of all things and how we can use the various scientific theories to examine their validity. Yes, Chris? Like the Big Bang Theory? Oh, I love that show! My mom and dad watched that show. Bazinga! <laughs> Not the show, 
the cosmic cataclysm that got the ball rolling for the whole universe. Yes, Chris, that is definitely something we'll be talking about. Can anyone think of any other ideas about how the universe came into being? My Papa Joe once said that he believed that the world was created five minutes ago and that all the age and everyone's memories were created at the same time. He called it the belly button theory. Oh, come on, that can't be true. Yeah, I'm pretty sure your granddad made that up just to mess with you. Don't worry, my grandpa's always making up stuff about how, making up how big his last fish was. Actually, it is a real theory, although it's technically called the Omphalos theory, but Omphalos is the Greek word for navel, or belly button, so he was even right about that. Yes, Chris. I saw a movie once where it turned out everyone was on a computer simulation and nothing was real. Oh, come on, that can't be true. I don't know about the veracity of the theory itself, but it is an idea that's been around since the early 1980s. Well, if that's true, I really need to figure out the cheat codes. And buy some extension packs. Man, there sure are a lot of theories. Well, yes, there must be. Scientists build knowledge through a complex process of coming up with ideas or theories about how things work and then testing to see if those observations back up those explanations. Observations inspire, lend support to, and help refute various scientific theories and hypotheses. It is through seeing with our own eyes that we are able to determine if something is true. Yes, Elise? Mrs. Carlyle, do you believe in gravity? What a silly question. How could anyone not believe in gravity? Now, now, children, you know all questions are welcome in this class. Yes, Elise, I do believe in gravity. Why do you ask? Because you said that only to believe something, you have to have seen it with your own eyes. And I don't think you can see gravity. Of course you can see gravity. No, she's right. You can't see gravity. Can too. Can't not. Can too. No, you can't. If I can't see gravity, why do I have to raise all those leaves in the fall? Listen, I can end this argument once and for all. I can show you gravity right now. There, gravity. That didn't prove anything. Yeah. All I saw was a book fall. Uh, yeah, and what do you think made it do that? Diane's hand. Oh, come <laughs> on, Miss Crabapple. No, actually, Chris, Elise, and Rob are right. I have never seen gravity. <gasps> However, I have seen its effects. And through seeing the change it has in the world, I can believe it's real. So we can believe something to be true by looking at how it affects the world? Very good. There are a lot of different forces that are totally invisible to the naked eye. But we can see its effects. And we can see through the change it has in the world that they're real. Can anyone think of any other forces that aren't seen but are visible? Yes. The wind. We can see trees bend and move. A kite stay up in the air, but we can't see wind. And magnets. We can see them attract and repel, but we can't see the magnetic force. What about radiation? You can't see that, but it can make you very sick. UV light, it can give you a sunburn. And most gases are unseen, but they can make you sick or causing an explosion. Oh, and we can't forget my favorite invisible force. Wi-Fi. <laughs> what? Can you see all the wireless communications happening around here? No. But I would say that Wi-Fi is just as important as gravity. Yes, those are all great examples of having to see the change to see the proof of the thing. Amy, Roy, Kat, I see you put your heads together. Can you think of anything our classmates might have missed? Well, we did think of one thing. This should be good. Yeah. I wonder what lame idea they have now. This is a force that has caused visible change in the world over and over again. It must be a very powerful force indeed. Oh, it is. Well, what is it? Yeah, don't leave us hang in suspense. At with it already. It is the love of Jesus. What? Are you serious? Very serious. Miss Crabapple, I know yesterday you said only a weak-minded simpleton could believe that Jesus was real. But the Bible is filled with people that was allowed for change after being Jesus one time. A demon-possessed man who lived in a graveyard who was out of his mind not only found sanity but purpose after Jesus cast the demons into a herd of pigs. Zacchaeus, the cruel tax collector, became honest, generous, and fair after being Jesus for the first time. Slow down. Those... Fables are almost 
2,000 years old. We have no way of examining their validity or checking if those are actually real people. But what if we could check out their stories? What if you could meet them face to face? But for that, you would need some sort of... Time machine! But there is no such thing as a time machine. But there is. Our grandpa made one. And we went back to the Bible times and it brought back proof. What proof could you possibly have? We have pictures. Pictures? Let me see those. This is Zacchaeus. This is Zacchaeus giving back the money he swindled from the town folks. This is a demon-possessed man in a town hall meeting explaining how Jesus gave him back his sanity. I don't know where you got these, or how you got them, but how do I know these weren't taken at some church camp Bible drama week? <laughs> I assure you, they're the real thing. Well, the costumes and props do look very realistic, but who was that in the background? They look strangely familiar. That's our grandpa, the professor. He's the one who built the time machine and took us back to Bible time. <laughs> The professor. I thought something was off. You can have the professor join us for class tomorrow if you wish. We will have to ask, but I'm sure he will come. Seeing is believing. The scientific method is my God. I can see it, that's what I believe. This is my grandpa, the professor. He built the time machine. John! John Smith! I knew it! It is you! Sarah Jane! It's Sarah Jane! It's been such a long time. Your teacher and I were in college together. We were lab partners. And she was the name she was the one that gave me the name, the professor. Say what now? You were in college together? Yep. And your grandfather was always the smartest one in the class. You were pretty smart yourself. I can't believe these are your grandchildren. The thing is I say, always talking about Jesus and now time travel. Uh well I remember how angry you were when your parents became Christians. You were angry about a lot of things back then. I was. I can't, you said you couldn't believe your parents had been brainwashed. I did. And then I started toying with the idea of time machines. I could, if I could just go back, feel the evidence I needed to tell my parents I was wrong. Well, I take it you built your time machine and found your answers. I did. I traveled back in time. I saw people who are forever changed by Jesus and Nazareth, like he is, the demon possessed man, and many others. But, Sarah Jane, I haven't have to travel back in time. The proof is all around us. People every day whose lives have been changed by Jesus. My dad used to be really mean, and he would say hurtful things to my mom and me. Once we got him to start coming to church and he met Jesus, he stopped doing all that. And now I know for sure that he loves me. You know, I've seen it too. My brother used to do drugs. He was always drugged out about something. But he went to a Christian rehab clinic and he tells me all the time now that Jesus is the only drug he eats. Professor, you've changed too. I mean, you look the same. A little older, a little heavier, but you're not angry anymore, and you're smiling. You never used to smile. You were always a stern professor, but now you seem so full of joy. That's because I am. <laughs> yes, I realized my parents were right, and I was wrong. As a kid, they became better people, all because of Jesus. So, you went from trying to disprove Jesus to promoting him? I could tell you with complete certainty that people have changed for the better. You certainly have, and I never would have believed it had I not seen it with my own eyes. 
same kids that were there on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon when they got dropped off. They're going to go home and they're going to be on a camp high for a little while and people are going to see a difference. And that's going to cause ripples and ripples and ripples. Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope that you feel blessed as we feel to be able to share it with you. Uh, let's give these guys more hand. Close us out with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you for these kids and for the message. I thank you for the time that we've had uh, together and the time that we'll continue to have uh, through, through tomorrow. Um, keep us safe as we travel back. Uh, thank you for all of these people that took time out of their, their day and their life to, to come and hear your word, your message brought through these kids. Help us all to let you be seen in us. Here we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>